Today we're going to talk about the design of water and sediment control basins, or NRCS Practice 638, using LiDAR data in ArcMap. This workflow is a pretty simple desktop to field practice design tool using the KISS, or keep it simple stupid method, drawing on existing tools and keeping users in a familiar environment, such as ArcGIS. It's basically eight steps to the workflow. Um, all steps are developed in Python for ArcGIS and available at the Arc Info license level for ArcGIS 9.3 through 10.1. Deployed as a distributable ArcGIS toolbox, does not require special permissions for installation or DLLs. Um, uses LiDAR derived elevation data, and we also utilize Microsoft Excel to use a spreadsheet to fill in the blanks and um, derive our desired and required design elevations. Let's cover the basic methodology. Pretty simply, we use uh, ArcGIS to determine watershed area, derive a runoff curve number come up with basin stage storage data and derive average slope. And then we export XY coordinates for our intake location and embankment reference points in the field. Also take care of tile design and layout by drawing tile lines in ArcGIS and exporting X, Y, and Z coordinates every X number of feet for a proposed tile line. And then we actually um, hand plot to desired scale on profile paper and then enter data into the WASCOB design spreadsheet to finish tile design considerations. All right, once we have the basins and, and tile lines designed in the office, we'll have to head the field, uh, locate all points for the embankment intakes and tile lines, and uh, that will be done with UXT. And the key part of this whole process is going to be the calibration from the LiDAR data as designed in the office to laying it out on the ground in the field. So there'll be a uh, calibration step and then uh, once we've calibrated we'll have to make uh, necessary elevation adjustments if any are required and uh, the final step will be uh, once everything's laid out to uh, verify that our basin height will meet the design as uh, in the uh, design spreadsheet. So next we'll talk about each step in the project workflow. All these tools are meant to be executed sequentially. Uh, number one begins with defining an area of interest. In this case, you basically uh, either draw a polygon mask or provide an existing boundary to clip down the DEM and set up your project uh, data structure. And um, we also create some contours at any interval, kick out a depth grid, which shows us where water actually would pool as it would move across the landscape, and culverts may or may not be necessary. Um, we use a hill shade for of 3D visualization. Um, and kind of the key part here is we create a project DEM uh, reflecting relative elevation data. Um, effectively, elevation gets rounded to the uh, nearest foot or nearest tenth of a foot, and uh, the lowest elevation in your project area becomes elevation zero, ranging up to the highest elevation in your project area of interest. That's the map outputs of the first step. Um, we get these nicely indexed contour lines, um, the depth grid as I mentioned, hill shade, and then this is an illustration of the project DEM. In this case we have 29.9 uh, feet of rise in the DEM, so our lowest elevation is zero and the max is 29.9. Every um, increment within there is rounded to the nearest tenth of a foot. Uh, the second step is creating a stream network. This allows you to incorporate any culverts that may be needed in your uh, DEM to uh, break these digital dams and properly route flow across the uh, landscape. If no culverts are needed, you don't need to supply any. Um, and this sets up the flow accumulation and flow direction layers in the background uh, for watershed delineation in the next step. Uh, number three then is to create watershed or watersheds, uh, depending on how many you wish to uh, incorporate into your project. You basically draw a line referencing the location of each embankment. Multiple basins can be delineated in one step if you start at the downstream most portion and work your way upstream. They'll be nested within one watershed and numbered with individual unique sub-basin IDs. Um, this line serves as a pore point for watershed delineation, reflecting a dam effectively, um, and then it serves as a reference line for the toe of your embankment throughout the project. This brings us to number four, watershed attributes, a tool that will clip down our soils data and create a land use layer for deriving our runoff curve number in the next step, 
and it will also develop a stage storage table for each one of the sub-basins included in the project. The storage is calculated from that reference line, and the reference line is treated as the embankment toe to give us a conservative uh, reading of stage storage within each basin. After running number four, several things need to be taken care of in your land use and soils data just to make sure that each unique land use is attributed and you'll be ready to run number five. Um, this will calculate a weighted runoff curve number for each sub-basin and then add the resultant curve number to the watershed attribute table. We'll also create a soil and land use summary layer and um, we're drawing our values from the TR55 or the EFH for each curve number derived from the unique combinations of land use and soils. Once we've got all this data derived, we're ready to uh, use tool number six, which will invoke Microsoft Excel and open the Washcob Design Spreadsheet. Once open, simply click the Import Data button and set the data path to the workspace selected in the first step of your project. Um, and this will automatically import all of the relevant data from your watershed attributes, stage storage, runoff curve number, average slope, and drainage area. And in addition, it will put a blank stakeout points in your map that will be used in the next steps to create your GPS reference points. So once populated, this is what your spreadsheet would look like. The spreadsheet was originally developed by Eric Superior, and we just simply modified it to bring in the values from our ArcMap project. We've got our watershed area, our runoff curve number, and our stage storage all automatically populated and uh, space is necessary, which allows us to derive our required elevation and then select a design elevation and intake elevation for our project. Once we've selected a design elevation and an intake elevation in the worksheet, we can step back into ArcMap and open up tool number seven. Tool number seven can be run um, for any number of sub-basins within your project. You simply begin with entering a sub-basin number, typing in your design elevation, and typing in the intake elevation. Use the simple add features tool to add an intake and reference points will all be automatically created along your reference line at the design elevation that was specified. All these points get appended to the single shape file in your table of contents and will later be exported to the GOXT or other GPS unit. Once number seven has been completed for each one of your sub-basins, you can open uh, tool number eight which will allow you to digitize your Tile, starting at the outlet and working up to your embankment structure. Um, simply draw the line in ArcMap and then select an interval for station points. In this case, it's 25 feet. That can be any interval you choose. A point will be generated at each interval along that line, giving you X, Y, Z, and uh, thus M values for the distance between each point. And the results are all imported also into that Excel. Um, and Natural ground and tile profiles can then be hand plotted to scale on a fillable PDF profile sheet, including the documents folder within your project workspace. The tile profile data once derived can then be put into the WASCOB spreadsheet to finish your tile design considerations. So let's discuss the file structure and some of the outputs from the workflow we just covered. When the tools run and you set up your project workspace in the beginning, you have a documents folder created, a GIS output folder created that will house all your uh, GPS points for stakeout in the field, and pretty much everything else that's done in the entire project happens in within this WASCOB geo database. The file name will always be prefixed with the folder that you chose for a workspace in the beginning, underscore WASCOB GDB. You also create a log file uh, that basically prints out all the messaging you see when you're in ArcMap, but will also hold any messages related to any errors or anything that may happen during the process. It will all be printed here for easy troubleshooting later. But basically, we, uh, we know our workspace, we know what our input DEM was, and the elevation units that were selected in the beginning. Um, and the same thing holds true for each tool as it's executed. Inside that documents folder, there's a number of uh, worksheets. The LiDAR WASCOB is, of course, the spreadsheet that we work with for our design. Um, cover sheet, detail sheet, and profile sheet um, all provide necessary design elements for completion of the project. Uh, we also have a design checklist, O&M, and estimate sheets will be in there. Um, and then a blank tile or project profile sheet for printing. 
Each of these PDFs can be customized for the county or area they're being used in, and they're all fillable PDFs that provide options for drop downs for details um, or summary of quantities, units, etc. This is an example plan view printed directly from an ArcMac template to scale. And an example tile profile once it, the PDF has been printed and points have been plotted to scale. Um, Okay, we've got a completed design in the office and we have to go to the field and calibrate and check it against what's actually in the field. To do this, we'll have all our stakeout points loaded on the GXT. and we'll bring a laser out there to verify elevations. Um, the first step is to locate all your stakeout points with a flag and then uh, once you've located them, you can check your horizontal distances between your tile stations to verify um, station intervals and then you can use your reference points to check against your intake elevation and calibrate the the design to what is actually in the field. In this case you can see the as state elevations here, the planned elevations as designed in the office and the minor differences between the two. Um, and here's the profile of natural ground and the tile design. And the, the red points are the as staked in the field. And you can see they pretty well follow that planned elevation that we're looking for. Um, here's an example where there was a vertical shift you can see the staked elevations here, planned elevations right next to it and the difference. Uh, there's a five tenths of a foot adjustment required to make the the elevations in the field match what was on the design sheets. Uh, here you can see the points in red are the points that were staked in the field. Um, each of them were slightly above what was on our design elevations but relatively they're very accurate. Uh, if we just make that adjustment to make the, the elevations in the field match what was on our design sheet. 